So I decided to make a RoboDog. Why? Well, RoboDogs are cool, but I also wanted to test my engineering skills on a cool engineering project. I've also never had the ability to make anything more complex than a basic Lego balancing robot when I was 13 years old. So I guess you could say that this is a project five years in the making. So what will this RoboDog need to be able to do? The RoboDog would need to be able to do basic maneuvers such as moving forwards, backwards, rotating left and right, all that jazz. I would need to be able to balance for 20 seconds uh, on its two wheels. It would need to be able to go from its four-wheeled orientation to a two-wheeled orientation so that it can start balancing. And it would need to be able to follow pre-planned paths autonomously. The robot dog will need to be able to act like a dog, so things like barking, jumping around, uh, maybe not jumping around, just roaming around, doing random things like a dog. It would need to be able to play catch on command. Uh, we would need to be able to communicate to the robot dog with like hand waves. So like if you do this or something, uh, the robot dog would balance or, or jump or whatever. It would be cool if we can make it move like a Segway on two wheels moving forwards and backwards. And also if we can follow people with that robot dog around. This was a wild ride of a project as you can tell by the giant criteria list. Well, I got started by drawing very basic sketches of what the RoboDog should include and what it should look like. So the initial sketch included wheels so that the RoboDog could move around, a neck so that the RoboDog could look around, a mouth so that it can grab onto things, an ultrasonic sensor so that it can detect objects far out and then track it and then finally grab onto it. And then finally a lift arm with a servo to get the RoboDog into its four-wheeled to two-wheeled balancing orientation. After doing that and some initial theory, I bought the parts and started CADing, which is essentially drawing 3D objects on a computer. Pretty cool. CAD, which stands for Computer Aided Design, really helps me, as well as engineers and designers, put together their projects in virtual environments, which saves a lot of time and money. And it's also just really cool and very accurate to use put together your projects. Also, I am not sponsored by Onshape, so if you would like to sponsor me, hit me up. So this is what the RoboDog looks like in CAD, almost like the real thing. So let me reintroduce you to the three designed RoboDog mechanisms. This is the lift arm, nicknamed the hammerhead, and you can probably figure out why that's its name. Next up, we have the seeker arm. This thing can sweep up to 90 degrees in a cone to allow the RoboDog to search for objects. Next up, we have the gripper, which, well, uh, grips onto things. Finally, we have the drivetrain, which allows the RoboDog to do different maneuvers. After finishing the first of many CAD iterations, I printed the 3D printable parts. I thought it was going to be a simple print job, but it turned out to be so much more. The 3D printer essentially became the project for a good amount of time, and it took a lot of effort, time, and created many failures. So at some point while trying to fix my 3D printer, I managed to shove a diagonal cutter into the cooler fan. Why? Well, because I'm only human after all. Well, I was trying to reset the printer uh, for another try to get the print working and I uh, broke one of the blades on that fan right there, if you can see it. Um, and now it's unbalanced. I mean, it's already broken, so I could try and fix it. And if not, I would just order a replacement. But here's the thing, if it's unbalanced, all I have to do is cut off that amount of weight and it's just gonna be a fan that spins less air. So, I mean, it's already broken, so it's not much better. Well, if it doesn't sound loud, then you should be proud. There we go. This is the most redneck engineering I've ever done. Um, yeah, definitely wouldn't want to apply that to a airplane engine or anything else really. But I mean, hey, as long as it pushes air and it doesn't vibrate madly, then we're basically good. Hopefully we don't uh, blow this thing up. Today. All right, so, if I want to have my prints be absolutely perfect or, you know, not messed up, chances are the error in those prints probably come from right here, this broken fan. That means that the cooling uh, can't be done 100% efficiently and properly. Uh, so I got the spare fans here. And the other thing is the blocked nozzle. Uh, chances are this nozzle has been running at an improper temperature because of the fan that's broken. Probably did something bad to that nozzle. And I bought like a bunch of extras. So I soldered the wires together. I just gotta put this wire cover over all of this. All right, and would you look at that? It looks very nice, very neat. Tuning, fixing, and retuning the 3D printer took, um, I don't know, a good 40 hours in one week. 
and that wasn't even the, the project itself. After fixing everything about that 3D printer, I was able to finally get back to printing parts properly. Well, of course, after printing out all the parts, doing all of that hard work, fixing the 3D printer, the CAD file that I used for the blue servo motor did not match the real life counterpart. So I had to redesign the seeker arm as well as the gripper gears and had to reprint them again. Finally, with all the parts corrected and printed out, I was able to assemble the Robodog. This thing's a little scary because um, every time I use this drill, um, you can kind of see what happens. Oh, yeah. You might not be able to notice it on the camera, but the lights literally dim, and I'm probably going to trip the breaker in my house at some point. Um, so yeah. After finishing the assembly and wiring, it was finally time to wake the Robodog up for its first time. Well, uh, the Robodog didn't blow up, so that's nice. And now it's time to get to programming. So I started by working on the basic motor functions, which the majority of the project relies on. All right, and now I just went all out and uh, had some fun. With a little bit of work, I was able to make the Robodog follow pre-programmed paths. All right, so I used this uh, IMU and basically PID tuned it. Well, mainly just P tuned it. Maybe. So push it a little. All right, it get, it stays on track. I'll put in a little bit more effort. So basically, the idea is that it self corrects. It uses the angle that the IMU gives, and it basically tells the wheels to slow down or speed up, so that we can get back on course. That's basically 45. And that's me. Oh, shh. Unfortunately, while testing the Robodog's movement, one of the motor mounting brackets had broken. And because I used PLA, the material used uh, to 3D print the base and, and all of the other 3D printable parts, and it was meltable at soldering iron temperatures, I took a soldering iron and partook in some very questionable plastic welding. As it turns out, it actually worked pretty well. All right, so we got the basic motor functions down, but I wanted to get started on the balancing. So I worked on trying to get data from an MPU 6050, which is essentially a gyroscope, accelerometer, and thermometer all in one package. As you can see, we can take the MPU 6050 data to show us how we are tilting this breadboard. It gets brighter on the side that we are tilting it. Pretty helpful and pretty cool. From the MPU 6050, we will use the accelerometer and gyroscope data to determine the tilt angle of the robot, which you can imagine would be used to balance. So how does the balancing actually work? Well, the theory is actually pretty simple. Uh, the Robodog will gradually use the lift arm to increase the angle of inclination, and right before or right after it starts falling over, it'll record that angle of inclination, and that would essentially be our balance angle. Right when it records its balance angle, it'll retract the lift arm and start balancing. It'll be aiming for that angle the entire time, so if it's falling forwards past that angle, it'll move forwards until it matches up, but if it accidentally overshoots or something and it falls backwards, then it'll move backwards to 
keep that angle intact. Originally, I wanted to use some very complicated physics to be able to figure out what that angle is because the center of mass is not directly above the wheels, meaning we can't just say 90 degrees all the way up is our balance angle. But because we figured out this simple method of being able to inch up, then it worked. Uh, if it's simple and it works, then it's better. I implemented this in code and tested some things out. The question is, at what speed or power do we give the wheels to counteract the tip? Well, this is where something called PID tuning comes in. Here is a quick explanation of PID tuning. So in PID tuning, you have something called an error, which is essentially how far away you are from where you want to be. There's a certain amount of effort put in to get to that destination based on how much error we have, how much length of time we still have error, and how quickly the error is changing. This is essentially P, I, and D respectively. So what is P? Well, it's essentially saying that the more error we have, the more effort we put in. Proportion. So it's basically proportional to the error. Pretty simple. What is I? Well, it is the integral term. And to keep it simple, it is essentially the area under the error versus time graph. So if we have error and this is the bottom of the graph, if the error, if the error continues going and goes on forever, then our area, everything in between it, will continuously increase. And that area represents effort. So if we still have error for a long amount of time, then we will have a lot of effort built up. This is generally used for things with friction or gravity or any resistance force that is holding us back for a long time. And finally, we have D, which is the derivative term. And essentially, it is how fast our error is changing. So if we are plummeting in error very, very quickly, then we know to decrease our effort a little bit. Uh, because that error decrease uh, per second is very fast, we have a hugely negative number, a negative number combined with a positive number, sort of cancel out. And that is essentially what PID is. We combine all of those values, P, I, and D, together to equal an arbitrary effort number. And this is where the tuning comes in, because we can multiply all of these values, the P, I, and D values, by a number of our choosing in order to make P, I, and or D more or less prominent. Class dismissed. I hope you learned something new, and I hope it was interesting. Taking PID tuning and putting it into our code would allow for our RoboDog to balance much smoother. Of course, if we tune it right. All right, it is time to finally test the balancing out and have it totally work for the first time. All right, so when I was testing this thing out, it seems like I can only have the RoboDog balance when it's directly connected to a USB. So I kind of figured it was a power issue. So uh, essentially what was happening was whenever the RoboDog retracted the lift arm, uh, the servo used to retract the lift arm sucked up all the power, which meant that our Arduino Nano, the brain of the RoboDog, turned off, reset, and tried to balance again, lift up again, and it would just keep on doing that forever and ever, and it would never stop. So when we connected it to the USB, the USB provided enough power through that power deficit and allowed us to continue balancing just normally, albeit with a USB. So because it was a power issue, I just ordered a 12 volt battery pack, put the double A's in, and it seems like it works. All right, let's test the RoboDog for real this time, shall we? As you can see, the RoboDog blew the 20 second balancing criteria out of the water. In fact, I actually tested this and it was able to balance for around 10 minutes before falling. So that's, that's very good, very nice. And man, I don't know about you, but whenever this thing balances, I get mesmerized watching it. Unlike me who cannot balance, this RoboDog balances pretty well. And that was a wild ride of a project. I mean, we went through so many hardships, but we're finally done. Wait a minute. This RoboDog isn't like a dog at all. It, it just moves around and, and balances on two wheels. I mean, it's more of like a, like a Robo Segway that sort of looks like a RoboDog. We're not even halfway finished.